Welcome to the Dragoon 1 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we will cover all of your skills as you train to tank the floor better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... to this! This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go, to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. 50 for Realm Reborn, 60 for Heavensward, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the Generals tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 80. Just put your skills on your hotbar in a way you feel comfortable as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. But with all that out of the way, let's begin. Level 1, True Thrust. You begin your journey as a lancer with a simple global attack of 210 potency. As a melee, stay close and keep poking away at them with this basic attack. Quickly, we'll segue into... Level 4, Vorpal Thrust. Lancer quickly teaches you the idea of combo attacks. A lone Vorpal Thrust is weaker, only doing 100 potency. Leading into it with True Thrust will power it up to 310 potency. Combos will always be highlighted on the hotbar, like so. Always be sure to follow up on your combos, as they are stronger than single attacks alone, and there's never a reason for you to skip steps in a combo. For a number of levels, you'll be spamming True Thrust into Vorpal Thrust to kill everything. I won't be bothering to mention the uncomboed potency of any future combo moves, as you should always be aiming to do the full combo whenever you can. Level 6, Life Surge. This skill is your first off-global skill and is one of your most important. It has a 45 second cooldown. It guarantees a critical hit while also being a small self-heal. The important part is this guaranteed crit. For now, always aim to use it for Vorpal Thrust. Your rotation remains the same, but now filling in Life Surge off cooldown for guaranteed Vorpal Thrust crits where you can. This is because Vorpal Thrust is your most powerful attack at the moment, and will always be using Life Surge on that most powerful attack, which will change when we go forward. At level 8, we get our first roll action, Second Wind. We also gain Leg Sweep at level 10, and Bloodbath at level 12. Make room for these as they're useful skills, especially the healing ones. I will not be going deep into roll actions during this video, but I shall be making note of them. If you'd like an in-depth description of each of these skills, check the melee roll actions video in the description. I do recommend it, because all of these are useful in one way or another. Level 15, Piercing Talon. This skill is not automatically obtained like your previous skills. Not only do your class quests give you some leveling gear, sometimes they give you entire skills. In future, I will simply put on screen when it is a quest skill. Just keep in mind that if you do not automatically obtain a skill, it is a quest skill. You should be doing your quests anyway, but this gives you even more reason to. Piercing Talent itself is a weak 150 potency. However, the good thing about this skill is that it is a ranged skill. As you level up, more and more enemies will automatically aggro from sight, sound, or other factors. This will allow you to choose a single enemy out of a group, use Piercing Talon, and drag it away from the rest to safely fight it alone. But, a very common mistake newbies do is using this skill too much. The max range isn't very far, and it takes less than an entire GCD to run into melee range. It will also break combos, 
making the use cases even smaller than that. Try to only use this in solo play. The further you get, the worse it becomes. But when you're alone, fighting single enemies at a time could be a big advantage for you to abuse. Level 18, Disembowel. This does 270 potency to the enemy and is comboed off of True Thrust. You now have two combo paths and will always build upon these all the way up until the level 80 skill set. What Disembowel has is a 10% boost to all damage you do. This is key to Dragoon's damage output. So now you will do a Disembowel combo, then spam the Vorpal Thrust combo until your buff gets low or runs out. Aim to keep Disembowel up almost all the time, or you'll be missing out on a lot of damage. That 10% adds up very quickly. At level 22, we get the roll action, Faint. Level 26, Full Thrust. A whopping 530 potency when used after Vorpal Thrust. This is where things start to get interesting, but not by much. Your main combo is complete to say. True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust. Since Life Surge is best used on your strongest attack, try to only ever use it on Full Thrust. This is always going to be our strongest weapon skill, so it's easy to practice idea from now until max level. Also be sure to only use this combo after you are buffed by Disembowel all the same. Once again, that 10% damage adds up fast, and that becomes especially true with an attack that does 530 potency. Level 30, Lance Charge. On a 90 second cooldown, all of our damage is increased by 15% for 20 seconds. Whenever we put up Lance Charge, we want to push our damage hard. There are all of our strongest moves and such. We don't have much at this point, but we can put this up on cooldown and make sure to keep our GCD rolling to maximize how much we get out of Lance Charge. Be sure to only use cooldowns once you actually get into the fight and not before it, or you'll waste some of the timer. At level 30, you'll be able to undertake your first job quest to obtain a Soul Stone, as well as your first job action. You must also complete all class quests from your guild, the other requirement is the level 20 main story quest, Self Management. This takes place soon after joining a grand company. This won't be an issue on normal servers, but any server with preferred status and the road to 70 buff will likely leave new players to be 30 long before this story threshold is met. Level 30, Jump. For becoming Dragoon, we get Jump, a 30 second cooldown that has us perform a huge well jump, and do 310 potency of damage to the enemy. With one big caveat, we're animation locked for the entire duration. We have to be extremely careful when weaving this between globals. If an AoE is going out when we use jump, we will likely be unable to dodge it. This is a major part of learning the process of Dragoon. You will learn eventually, but you will take a lot of damage and deaths on the way up to level cap. This is natural, don't get discouraged. But a common mistake newbies make with jump is standing a mile away from the enemy and using it. There are two problems with this. One is that you are out of range for globals before, during, and after the skill. The other is that you're not buffing it at all. 310 might not seem like a high potency, but later on when we're multiplying multiple buffs together, we're losing out on way more and overall just in general doing way less. Try to almost always use jump when next to the enemy. Jumps are also never to be double weaves. If we use a jump between weapon skills, no other abilities will fit between those attacks. We'll see double weaves put into practice much later from now, but for now, just keep this in mind. And finally, just because the single target attacks, we should still use these off global jumps in AoE. Extra damage is still damage, 
and takes no extra effort to use a jump in AoE. That is, once we have our AoE. But that aside, let's craft our first major opening rotation and explain it. With as many skills as you have now, it seems like a good time to do so. Openers set the pace for an entire fight in later levels, so familiarizing yourself with the idea early on is good. We're going to start very simple, but it's going to get far more involved as we continue. True Thrust, Disembowel, Lance Charge, True Thrust, Jump, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust, and continue on like so. Obviously we want to put Disembowel up as it's a long damage up buff for 30 seconds. But why hold off on our OGCD so long? For one, it's for later on when we have way more attacks. For two, it's so they buff the best attacks they can. Since it's possible to get 9 GCDs within a Lance Charge window, we choose to buff 3 rotations of the Full Thrust combo, which is 9 GCDs exactly. This also depends on skill speed levels, so don't worry about that too much, but I thought I would at least mention it. By doing things like this, we also end up buffing Jump, multiplying the damage output by both Disembowel and Lance Charge, making the attack far stronger than if we might had opened with it. Then we just continue on, spamming the full thrust combo until our disembowel is about to run out. Afterwards we go use that combo, and then go back to full thrust spam. Be sure to use jump and lance charge on cooldown, then use life surge on full thrust anytime life surge comes back. With all that in mind, we can move on to further skills. At level 32, we gain another roll action, Arm's Length. Level 35, Elusive Jump. On a short 30 second cooldown, Elusive Jump is a very situational skill in combat, but can save your life or the lives of other party members in a pinch. It can also very easily kill you if not used right. The 15 Yom Trip is very big and you may jump right into an enemy AoE, or worse, off of the map in the case of fights you can fall out of. If you're falling behind the party, you can use Elusive Jump to catch back up by a little bit, in addition to any normal sprinting you should be doing. If you need to quickly get away from an enemy, or out of an AoE, that's another way to use it. Just be sure you HAVE to Elusive Jump before you do it. As I said, you could end up launching into an equally bad, or even worse, position. It also works for getting closer to enemies instead of away. If you run out of an AoE, you can elusive jump back in afterwards, or use it to negate some kind of knockback. Arm's length is usually enough for that, but sometimes it's not available. One final use is to open a boss fight with it. When the tank runs in to pull the boss, we can elusive jump to the boss to reach it quickly. Though, sprint usually does enough of that. Just be sure you know how you're using it when you do use it. Dangerous, but very useful. Level 40, Doom Spike. Our first area of effect attack. 170 potency per enemy hit in a 10 yom line in front of you. It sure feels more like a cone sometimes, but always treat it as a line. Throw up Lance Charge and spam away. Life Surge also works on this. If the tank is moving still and you can get it off, get Disembowel up too. The bigger the tank is pulling, the stronger AoE gets. But the minimum number of enemies to start AoEing for Dragoon, and most jobs, is just three enemies. Three or more, get spamming. Also keep in mind this is hugely ranged. I'm hitting all three striking dummies here despite being nowhere near the original striking dummy. Aim this to hit the most enemies you can, and again, if there's at least three, use Doom Spike. Just be warned though that this will break combos if you use it in between combo hits. But if for whatever reason you need to use Piercing Talon, which you shouldn't, 
Doom Spike is actually a better option if you're in range for that. But you shouldn't stay far away from enemies long enough for any reason to use Piercing Talon or Doom Spike as a ranged attack. Level 45, Spine Shattered Dive. A 60 second cooldown for only 240 potency sounds pretty minuscule, but free damage is free damage. The range of this skill is 20 yarms, which is a pretty good distance. It's also a gap closer that stops you at the edge of the enemy, guaranteed, instead of putting you back at your starting position. In the worst of situations, you can immediately catch back up to the party. It's also very good for when you need to run away from an enemy and want to get back in fast. Much like jump, you will want to use it mid-fight once you have a buff or two up, and then off cooldown from there. Some fights, however, especially in later trials, will involve some heavy dodging that can leave you far away from the boss. This will get you right back into the fight almost no matter how far you've been pushed away from the boss. It also works to disable enemy pushes when timed right, just like Elusive Jump. Keeping the flow mid-fight is far stronger than closing the gap on an unpulled enemy, especially if Sprint is up. Much like Jump, do not double weave this with anything and try to use it on cooldown. To start level 50, we get our final roll action, True North. Level 50, Chaos Thrust. Here it is, your final class skill and the end to the Chaos combo, which combos off of Disembowel. This is your first example of a positional skill, or skills that gain effects or stronger damage from hitting the specific position around the enemy. Always aim to hit your positionals. A small 290 base potency, or 330 potency when activated at the enemy's rear, shown here in this diagram. The big part is 24 seconds of damage over time, or DOT, for 45 potency per hit, or TICK. Dots are on the server tick, which is every 3 seconds. The DOT will hit 8 times, and in total do 360 potency over the entire duration. In total, this becomes an attack of 690 potency, which is stronger than even Full Thrust. However, we won't be using Life Surge on this. The dot is not affected by Life Surge, meaning Life Surge is only giving the crit to the 330 potency main hit, while Full Thrust is 530 potency guaranteed crit. Anytime you're putting up Disembowel in a fight, be sure to throw out Chaos Thrust too. Remember to always finish your combos where you can, and if you're fighting exactly two enemies, you can put Chaos Thrust on both enemies instead of just one. Level 50, Dragon Fire Dive. On a 120 second cooldown, this does a 380 potency AoE in a small radius of 5 yams. This is powerful as an AoE ideally used in those situations instead of single target when possible. Even in single target, however, it is still extremely powerful. Much like Spine Shatter, it comes with the great benefit of also being a quick gap closer and push back breaker, being ideally used mid-pull. And because it's an ability, we can weave it between GCDs for free damage. Prioritize using this for AoE, but use it on cooldown otherwise. And much like Jump and Spine Shatter Dive, do not double weave this with anything. You just have to worry about aiming this a little bit more, since the AoE is focused on the original target, and not based around your position. But that covers our full A Realm Reborn toolkit. Let's put it all together for a full opener at level 50. This probably isn't optimal, but that's not a big deal at 50, and it gives you a good baseline plus muscle memory for how hectic it can be when you get the full opener at level 80. Let's go through it now. True Thrust, Lance Charge, Disembowel, Jump, Chaos Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, 
full thrust, and then continue on from there. Like before, we get our buffs up, and then start spamming our OGCD attacks to get everything within Lance Charge, and keep everything on cooldown. But things have shifted around a lot due to how many skills we have. We moved Lance Charge to back before Disembowel, since we have so many different jumps to fit in, which we want to weave in each of our jumps one at a time due to how long their animations are. We do them in order of cooldown time since we'll get more uses out of the shorter cooldowns than the longer ones. Once we've gotten through all of our jumps, we only have Life Surge left to use, which we slot into our last full weave for Full Thrust. Keep going on with the full thrust combo until disembowel is about to run out, and then repeat our GCD rotation from the chaos combo. But with this, you have a good rotation to follow through your Realm Reborn patch content, and will be built upon all the way up to level 80. Keep on pushing forward and reach your new toolkit in Heaven's Word. Level 52. Battle Litany. Your first Heaven's Word skill is quite the doozy. An extremely long 3 minute cooldown, but a wide 15 yom range for a 10% crit rate buff for 20 seconds. The party will have to be trying to avoid it, or be in 24 man content to ever be out of range with how far this reaches. This essentially secured Dragoon a raid slot for 2 expansions in a row by itself so be sure to get it out there. Use it on cooldown and use it every chance you get, especially when the tank pulls a lot of enemies at once. You'll almost always pair this with Lance Charge when Litany comes off of cooldown. Level 54, Blood of the Dragon. This is an awkward one to start. A short 25 second cooldown 20 seconds of 30% increased power to jump and spine shatter dive. This is a huge power boost that even introduces an entire gauge. This will become much more important later, but for now, the best use of it is just before you start fighting. You have 20 seconds before you have to use your jumps, and mid rotation, Blood of the Dragon just gets in the way. Just be sure to put it back up before you use any jumps, and prepare for it to become much more important down the line. Level 56, Fang and Claw. This does 320 potency, or 360 from the flank. The flank of the enemy is demonstrated by this diagram shown here. This skill will combo off of Full Thrust, adding text to Full Thrust saying it will grant Sharper Fang and Claw, when executed while under the effects of Blood of the Dragon. This Sharper buff lasts for 10 seconds. All combos basically work this way, but with a 15 second window to execute the next step of the combo before the combo expires. This is just a far more visible way of doing it, due to it being a buff. More on the skill itself, it's not as high a potency as you'd hope for being a fourth hit, but it does raise the potency of the entire combo overall. It also extends the timer for Blood of the Dragon by 10 seconds up to its maximum of 30 seconds. This effect will matter in 4 more levels, but for now, it just means you don't have to manually turn back on Blood of the Dragon as often. This is also why we want to make sure we have Blood of the Dragon running at all times. If it drops at any point and you finish a combo, you won't get to use Fang and Claw. Keep the combos going as usual just for the practice, and practice keeping up Blood of the Dragon 100% of the time, except for between pools. Level 58, Wheeling Thrust. 320 potency and 360 potency from the rear. This combos off of Chaos Thrust, and otherwise works the exact same way as Fang and Claw, but with a rear positional and comboed off of the Chaos combo. Now it has become much, much harder to drop Blood of the Dragon with every single one of your combos having a Blood of the Dragon extender attached. 
At this point, you can now do your combos in a 2 to 1 ratio. Do one Chaos Thrust combo, then do two full Full Thrust combos, and repeat over and over using stuff on cooldown otherwise. Keep practicing this idea. Level 60, Gear Skogel. On a 30 second cooldown, this does a 300 potency AoE, but only is executable while under Blood of the Dragon. This is AoE built into your normal rotation and adds on to some initial burst AoE for any trash pulls. It also is even larger of an AoE than your GCD AoE. Treat this like a jump you can double weave, throwing it out once all your buffs are up. But again, be sure to use this in every situation on cooldown. The cooldown is very short, so even when using it on a single enemy, it will be back up in time for the next AoE that you'll have to do. And 300 potency AoE on a short cooldown is extremely powerful. Like with Doom Spike, aim it the best you can to hit as many enemies you can. And further, let me emphasize again the fact that it is only usable while under Blood of the Dragon. Four of your Heavensward skills were all tied into your Blood of the Dragon gauge, and it's only going to get more crowded from there in how important this gauge is and how you need to learn to keep it up now and forever. But we have our entire Heavensward toolkit now, and it changes things quite a bit for our opener. Let's go through it now, so we can set the pace for what comes later down the line. Pre-pull, Blood of the Dragon, then do the following. True Thrust, Disembowel, Battle Litany, Lance Charge, Chaos Thrust, Jump, Wheeling Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Gerskogel, Life Surge, Full Thrust, Bang and Claw, and continue on from there. Now that our GCD rotation up to our first Full Thrust has become 8 GCDs, we can fit in more things. For this reason, we delay our Land Charge and Battle Litany until after Disembowel. This also pushes Jump back up to after Chaos Thrust, ensuring we get both buffs affecting it, where before, I'm not so sure. Other than fitting in Wheeling Thrust, things are basically the same as always from here, fitting in jumps one at a time as we go on. The next big change is at the end, double weaving both Gear Skogel and Life Surge together. This is not at all how we're going to be doing things later on, but for now, we delay Gear Skogel all the way up to here just because we can double weave it. From here, we keep walking through our GCDs at a 2 to 1 ratio and use stuff as it comes off of cooldown. But again, don't get too comfortable with this entire opener, as by the time we get through Stormblood, things are going to take another major turn. Level 62. Sonic Thrust. This is an AoE with 200 potency comboed off of Doom Spike. This boosts our AoE power by a little bit, which is nice, but not only that, but it gives Blood of the Dragon 10 seconds back on the timer for executing the combo. Now you don't even have to watch the timer during AoE spam to be able to keep Gear Skogel available. Three enemies is still the count to look for to use AoE, and you have even more reason to use it now than before. Level 64, Lance Mastery. It only took 64 levels, but we have our first trait, a passive ability. This extends both of our combos to five hits in a row. Fang and Claw and Wheeling Thrust now give a sharper buff of the opposite skill that increases the potency by 100 potency. So after a Chaos Thrust, we do Wheeling Thrust like normal, but then we get a second proc of Fang and Claw, but they won't combo into each other infinitely. It ends after the fifth hit of the combo. 
This adds a bit more dancing around enemies to gain extra damage. You should still aim to hit all of your positionals where you can, and true north the rest of the time, especially because of another skill down the line. This also means our Blood of the Dragon recharge becomes 20 seconds per full combo. At this point, the goal now should be to never drop Blood of the Dragon. Ever. You'll likely still have dungeons where you lose Blood of the Dragon because of distances between pools, but if there's no downtime in a fight, this should never fall off. You'll have to get used to the flow of it too, but it's a good habit to get into with what comes next. Level 66, Dragon Sight. This skill is a bit iffy. On a 120 second cooldown, Dragon Sight grants you 10% damage up and one chosen target 5% damage up as long as they are within 12 yawns of you. The tether will break if they get too far away, but you will still keep your damage up. This forces the target to remain relatively close if they want their buff. The downside of this skill is the choosing of a target. The only macro I might recommend a Dragoon have is a Dragon Sight macro to automatically choose the nearest target, as you yourself must otherwise manually choose your target, which can be tough at the best of times. If your target isn't in range when you hit the button and manually activate it, the skill won't activate at all. As for your target, if they end up dying while you have them tethered, you will lose your buff entirely, so better hope they don't die after you give them the buff. Also, ranged players tend to never want Dragoon hugs, so prepare to tether your tank a lot. Luckily. Shadowbringers made it that you can just target yourself. This makes practicing a lot easier as you don't need a party member to be able to use Dragon Sight. But in party content, do try and partner somebody, even if it has to be the tank. 5% on a weak DPS, or the tank, is better than nobody getting the tether. Level 68, Mirage Dive. This one works in a special way. You can only use this skill by proccing it with jump. After using a jump, you will become dive ready and be able to use Mirage Dive to do 300 potency to the target. Because of this, jump functionally becomes two attacks in one. Jump itself and the Mirage Dive it gives. You also have 15 seconds to use the Mirage Dive, so it doesn't need to be immediately fired off. For the most part, you should fire it off immediately, but with how things might line up later, you might hold it for a couple of seconds, especially once we hit level 70, which, get used to only using Mirage Dive for under Blood of the Dragon, but you should be using Jump under that effect too anyway. Jump, Mirage Dive, and Gear Skogel typically will all fire off around the same time due to a 30 second recast for all of them. And remember, we do still use these all under AoE, but now we want to especially be using Jump and Mirage Dive in AoE. Again, that's we're at level 70. But before we get to that mentioned level 70 skill that's gonna change so much, we have our full opener available now. This opener is going to last us all the way up until level 80, and any changes we get will not change how any of this works. Let's walk through it now. Pre-pull Blood of the Dragon, and then do all of the following. True Thrust, Dragon Sight, Disembowel, Battle Litany, Lance Charge, Chaos Thrust, Jump, Reeling Thrust, Fine Shadow Dive, Fang and Claw, Gear Skogel, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, Mirage Dive, Fang and Claw, Wheeling Thrust, and then Repeat. What I mean by Repeat specifically is our global rotation. We will, from now on, alternate combos one after another. One full chaos combo to the fifth hit, 
and then one full thrust combo to the fifth hit. And do this over and over again. Chaos thrust, full thrust, chaos thrust, full thrust, etc. All of this while using stuff on cooldown as normal. But let's go through this opener slower now. To start, we fill in that first weave after True Thrust with Dragon Sight. The fact we're single weaving it makes it easier to manually activate if you are doing it manually. It's also our weakest cooldown, so it's the one we worry the least about, and so is why we get it up just in case we end up having a slow opener and not getting in all of our strongest attacks fast enough. Well, our stronger cooldowns are used in the next GCD just to be able to hit all of our stronger attacks more often. Our next change isn't until after Spine Shadow Dive. We now get to use the fifth hit of our combo and use this open space in the middle of our rotation to fire off Gear Skogel where before we waited. We fire it off here specifically because of how it will line up in our rotation later on. We'll get to that at 70. Because of this, Dragonfire Dive gets moved back to after True Thrust, and then to end it off, as we're doing our 4th and 5th combo hits of the Full Thrust combo, we finish off with Mirage Dive, leaving us with no off globals left to use, aside from our roll actions. As said before, we have 15 seconds to use Mirage Dive, so we wait until we have an open slot to put it in, which just so happens to be at the end of our main rotation. And again, from here, we just repeat our GCD rotation over and over again. Chaos combo, full thrust combo, etc. Be sure to practice this up while you can, since I mean it when I say this is our final opener. We won't change this at all for the rest of the leveling curve, even though there's still 12 levels left. Everything we get from this point on either is an upgrade to what exists or comes much later in the rotation and is way beyond the opener. Which, let's talk about one of those skills now. Level 70, Life of the Dragon and Nostrand. Everything comes together to what makes me love Dragoon so much with this level. This is a doozy to explain, so let's break it up piece by piece. To start, let's talk about the associated trait, Life of the Dragon. Every use of Mirage Dive will now start to fill the eye part of the Blood of the Dragon gauge. It takes two eyes to completely fill the eye. When full, the next use of Gear Skogel will upgrade Blood of the Dragon from Super Saiyan Blue to Life of the Dragon Super Saiyan Red, which also changes Gear Skogel into Nestrand. Secondly, your Blood of the Dragon timer will convert into a Life of the Dragon timer for 20 seconds or more based on your Blood of the Dragon timer going into Life of the Dragon. If under 20 seconds, you reset to 20 when entering Life of the Dragon. If over 20 seconds, you keep that extra time. So let's say you have 25 seconds on the timer when you use Gear Skogel with two eyes. You will have 25 seconds of Life of the Dragon. Further, during Life of the Dragon, you cannot extend your timer at all. Fang and Claw, Wheeling Thrust, and Sonic Thrust will do nothing. But you can still earn eyes from Mirage Dive. Our goal is to have around 23 seconds or more on the timer when we enter Life of the Dragon. The higher our Blood of the Dragon timer when using Gears Gogol, the higher our initial Life of the Dragon timer. Which means more uses of Nestrand itself. Which let's finally go over that now. Nestrand is a stronger version of Gears Gogol, replacing Gears Gogol for the duration of Life of the Dragon. It is a 400 potency AoE on a much shorter 10 second cooldown. And there is why we want to have 23 seconds or more. This will allow you to get 3 Nestrons in before the timer runs out. Be absolutely sure to use every Nestron you can. The damage adds up fast, especially in AoE. 
do not be afraid to quickly rush into Life of the Dragon the moment you can for AoE. Two or three Nistrons on a group of enemies very quickly adds up to insane amounts of damage. This turns us into an AoE powerhouse when it comes up. Upon the Life of the Dragon running out, you will gain a free Blood of the Dragon starting at 20 seconds, so you don't have to worry about interrupting your flow to put it back up. The only major optimization tip I'll give here is to try and always pay a Lance Charge as you're going into Life of the Dragon, as these are going to be your biggest bursts aside from your opener, and it gets even burstier later, so Lance Charge is perfect for this phase. They're also both red. Yes. Red. But anyway, every Lance Charge after the opening Lance Charge can have an associated Life of the Dragon every single time. It's all about banking your eyes and using Life of the Dragon at specific times. But that finishes off our Stormblood Toolkit. Our final skill really is the big selling point of Dragoon in general. We're going to get some more amazing skills, but Nastrand alone basically is the tipping point for me. But let's see how it all leads us into Shadowbringers. Level 72, Kurthan Torment. Kurthan Torment is an extension of our AoE combo for 230 potency, comboed off of Sonic Thrust, making it a three-part combo. The best part is that not only is our AoE stronger than ever, this also increases Blood of the Dragon 20 seconds for every full combo since Kurthan Torment is a 10 second extension on its own. It's also the clearest show of how big a Dragoon's AoE is, since the visual indicator is very blue and very box-shaped. Be sure to get out the full AoE combo when spamming AoE. Level 74, Jump Mastery and High Jump. This is the direct upgrade to Jump. Not only is High Jump's potency 400, but it's also way faster. Say goodbye to the painful animation lock of Jump. Just look at this comparison between them. There's still some animation lock, but it's so much faster it basically isn't there at all. You can afford to play a little riskier with this, but not much riskier. Level 76, Raiden Thrust and Lance Mastery 2. Lance Mastery 2 has two effects. The first is simply a bunch of potency boosts. True Thrust is up to 290 potency, and while the tooltip says that Vorpal Thrust and Disembowel have their base potencies up, it also ups their comboed potencies to 350 and 320 potency respectively. But we have one more potency boost in Raiden Thrust. Raiden Thrust replaces True Thrust, but not at all times. To use Raiden Thrust, you must successfully hit the positional requirement of your fifth combo hit which turns True Thrust into Raiden Thrust. So on the Chaos combo, you have to hit the positional of the Fang and Claw. For the True Thrust combo, Wheeling Thrust is the positional to aim for. By now you've had a lot of practice performing your positionals, but also know how hard it can be sometimes to achieve them. This incentivizes you to get your positionals more and make more effective use of True North. As for Raiden Thrust itself, it's a more powerful 330 potency, 40 more than True Thrust, effectively making the positional of your 5th combo hit worth 80 potency, which is a huge amount of damage. You'll get a lot of Raiden Thrusts over an instance, so it adds up quickly. If nothing else, this skill makes it more obvious when you've screwed up your positioning on some of your positionals. Level 78 Blood of the Dragon Mastery. Another extremely simple skill, but is such amazing quality of life. You no longer have to care about your Blood of the Dragon timer, aside from never dropping it. Blood of the Dragon and Life of the Dragon now both start at 30 seconds, rather than 20. This guarantees you 3 Nistrons every Life of the Dragon, as long as you use it on cooldown, for free huge boost to the consistency of our performance. 
And because the cooldown for Blood of the Dragon is only 25 seconds, as long as we are not trapped by a cutscene or other action prevention, Blood of the Dragon is quite literally now infinite. 30 seconds or more of cutscene is now just about the only way you can lose it. You can plan ahead for anything shorter than that. This is especially useful in dungeons for those long treks between enemy pools or when someone needs to go away from the game for a minute. Unless that's you, life won't lose you out on any gauge you built up. Level 80, Star Diver. But Mortal Chorus is a better name. Our ultimate skill is to become the most Anidhogs of the Anidhogs. Star Diver is available only in Life of the Dragon and is a powerful AoE with a 30 second cooldown. This cooldown is there to ensure you only get one Star Diver per Life of the Dragon. It does 600 potency for the first target and 420 potency to all further targets within a small 5 yom radius. Not only does it look amazing, but it is powerful as all can be. As long as you use this every time you go into Life of the Dragon, and don't dive into AoE puddles, you can't go wrong with how you use it. It's pure broken if used for AoE. Otherwise, try and get it in under Lance Charge, since you're lining it up with Life of the Dragon anyway. And as I said, be careful with Star Diver. It's a gap closer like your other jumps, so you end up right in the middle of enemy groups. This also has more of an animation lock than our normal jump pad, so you really have to commit to a Star Diver. But if nothing else, you can abuse the gap close nature to your advantage as you stylishly explode your enemies. Thank you for watching my Dragoon 1 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of Ananidhogs lay waste to your enemies.